everybody doing tonight? Oh boy, this is kind of the quietest crowd we've had in a while here. Isn't it great to be in New York City, huh? Absolutely. New York City, come and join us. Emerald Lagasse here, welcome to Emerald Live. I gotta tell you, I'm really excited about tonight's show. We got a big one for you tonight. Every once in a while, you need some comforting. So, what more comforting than a bowl of soup. You know, at least for me. I'm like a soup freak. You know, I love soups, and I love them all during the, you know, all through the year. I, I just not, it doesn't have to get cold for me to like soups. So tonight I want to share you, with you uh, some of my favorites. I'm going to show you first of all that, oh, well, let me ask you a question. What's more hottier than pork fat? <laughs> Answer is a butternut squash and sausage soup. I'm going to show you an unusual combination of potatoes and Roquefort cheese with a fabulous garnish made with a walnut crumpet. Oh, you want to talk about delicious. And then, of course, my favorite soup, at least in my house, ham and split pea soup. And a very hearty soup made in England, very popular in England. It's, a, it's called the Brown Windsor Soup. And I'm going to show you a little uh, nice garnish with that. Of course, the other comforting thing is Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live Bands in the house. All right, we're going to get warm. We're going to get fuzzy. We're going to cook up some hearty soups right here on Emerald Live. How you guys doing over here? Good to have you. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. All right. We're going to get right to it here. Boy, it's just something about soups that I really, really enjoy. My first soup with butternut squash. A, we've gotten so many of those www dot things, you know, food network dot things, about emerald. What do I do with butternut squash? <laughs> well, all of those we're going to take care of tonight. Show you how to make a soup with them. It's fantastic. The squash is like one of my favorites. What we're going to do, first of all, you can see that this, this one's probably been on a diet. <laughs> you know, it's skinny. It's in pretty good shape. You know, I like the round, you know, <laughs> squash. <laughs> so, we're going to cut it in half. It's a great vegetable, too. People should eat more squashes. We're going to cut it in half. Doc, you like squash? And I love it. Wait, what do you see what we're going to do with this tonight? All right. Now, you got to take these seeds out of here, inside of this little, what I call the bell, are these seeds. So you got to take these little seeds out. No big deal. See? Not rocket science. Hey, if you don't want to take the seeds out, don't take them out. <laughs> I'm going seedless. <laughs> That's it. So now that we got the seeds out, what we want to do is, the best way to intensify the flavors of this squash, in my opinion, is to roast it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that squash, we're going to drizzle a little olive oil on them. 
little salt. <laughs> some pepper. About 375 degrees. Done. If you don't want to do this soup, eat it as a vegetable. Try filling it with risotto after it's baked, you know? Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> Put some of them sausage meatballs in that little bell. All right, I don't want to get carried away here now. I'm back. <laughs> now what we're going to do, we'll take a little olive oil. And I got some sweet Italian sausage, and I just kind of did that. You know, when you, you know what I mean. You know, I just kind of did, you know, that. You know. Well, I don't want the casing. Ma'am, please, we're trying to stay with a G rating right now. Anyhow, I'm just going back to making soup right now. Inside of this olive oil, I'm going to stop browning my sausage, and then... <laughs> All right, I'm going to brown the sausage when we come back. Another notch! Stop yet, everybody! Welcome back. Hopefully you didn't miss that last act where we started. Just been fined. <laughs> Ticketed and fined on the cooking show. <laughs> we'll start cooking like this. So you stir it around. All right, we're browning our Italian sausage. We had a question in the audience of whether you could use hot Italian sausage. Absolutely. Somebody over here asked, well, could you use other types of sausages? Absolutely. It's a pork fat thing. <laughs> Once it starts getting brown, now what we're going to do is we're going to add some onion in here. There's always just something about pork fat and onion. You know? It's like Hansel and Gretel or whatever, you know, frick and frack. They just always go along. You know, they're always together. At least in my house. Pork fat appears, you can say and know that onion's right behind. <laughs> Sometimes I wake up in the morning, just put some pork fat on to get that smell going, you know? <laughs> you know, just let it render down, just kind of, you know. <laughs> feeling good. Now, once the onion goes, we got the old squash in there. We're going to add about ah, 30, 40 cloves of garlic. Because you know, there's pork fat, onions right behind, <laughs> and garlic's right behind that. So now we got that. Now I'm going to add some herbs in here. A little bit of sage. That's what this is. Okay. Yep. Fresh sage. I'm also going to use some sage as a garnish. I'll show you in a second. So a little bit of sage. Now, you can also overpower things with sage, so don't, don't be uh, adding too, too much. And uh, how about some oregano? Woo! Feel like I'm in Italy. <laughs> Woo! So we're just kind of... a little chop. That's what, you smell that? Can you smell that over there? That's what, you start chopping them herbs like that and it's like, oh. 
That's what really gets it going. That's some chopping music by Doc Gibbs. So now what we're going to do, now that we got that in there, little, uh, let's add a little margarine too. Oh yeah. Okay, now, can you guys smell that? Smelling pretty good. Can you, you smell a difference since I add the herb in there? All right, now, after about 45, 50 minutes, maybe an hour, I mean, what do I look like? A walking, uh, cooking thermometer? You know. Oh, he didn't give us the right time. Oh, he didn't. Hey, come on, look. Stick a fork in it, you know? <laughs> you know, look. <laughs> Looks done to me, honey. <laughs> I got enough trouble putting gas in my car, you know? <laughs> All right, you're gonna let this cool a little bit, then let me show you how simple this is. I guess we use a spoon, and it's kind of hot, but bear with me. What you wanna do is, when it's cool, you start scraping that butternut squash. <laughs> oh, wait, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> huh. You thought browning the sausage was step one? <laughs> Wait, do you see what's coming? Yeah, this works better, don't you think? Me too. All right, now, let's get down to business. Hey, I'm sorry, okay? I gotta peel the squash. <laughs> Guy in the back row, getting impatient. Gee, I thought he's been doing the same thing for 10 minutes. <laughs> Nobody said that to you this morning, hey? All right, chicken stock. Are we in the right studio? <laughs> I'm suddenly wondering if I'm on a new show. All right, guys, look, we're gonna bring it up to a simmer. Joking aside now. Yeah. Bring it up to a simmer like it is, and now you wanna let the love come out of it. That sausage. The onion, the squash is gonna stop breaking down, okay? That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna let that cook a little bit now. And this would be a good time to see where we are, where we are with seasoning before it starts cooking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Muy bueno. We're gonna let that get lovely in there. Then, we're gonna take a little bit of butter Heat's not on. We're gonna add the heat on. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do there. And in this pot, gonna add a little butter. Oh, come on, it's gonna feed 68 people. Sliced onions, we're gonna start caramelizing them in this pan right here. This is gonna start our second soup right here. We're gonna start caramelizing the onions. In this pan, just as the butter starts to start melting, we're gonna take our sage leaves, the big ones, see? And we're gonna start browning our sage leaves for a little garnish. Soup is simmering, getting happy. Butternut squash sausage, sage garnish, Onions caramelizing for another soup. When we come back, soup, soup, and more soup. Stick around. We'll be right back. Back in. in the MOI band, folks. Well, if you just joined us, we're doing some hearty soups. 
Now, I got to fess up. I added a little bit more stock to this while we're on the break. Just that butternut squash, it just started popping and breaking down. And like a potato, it gets a little starchy, but that's okay. You don't have to do that. If you want it more hearty or more thick, go at it. After this simmers about 30 minutes, that's when you bring the boat motor out. <laughs> just going to tone it down a little bit with the boat motor. Because I want a little texture, but I want to break some of that squash down as well, you know? Get a little bit of that silkiness on my palate. See how it's kind of changing? It's getting a little thicker again. These boat motors are wonderful. Now, you see how I still got chunks of sausage in here, though? Oh, yeah, babe. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to add a little bit of cream. You don't have to. If you don't, you don't have to. I just want a little more richness on my cheek and gums. A little apple cider. Vinegar. Apple cider vinegar. See, what happens when you add acidity to things sometimes, it sort of raises certain parts of what you're trying to bring out. And this is going to bring out the acidity of this is not only going to bring out that more of that sausage flavor, but that butternut squash as well. See how it's kind of just getting nice and creamy? That was a speed bump. Oh, yeah. All right, I'm not playing around anymore with this. That's it. We're just going to let it simmer, let it meld. Now, folks, this is when you should, uh, you know, before you use the family... For guinea pigs, you got to taste it. How much do I want to adjust it? Mm. Oh, my. Oh. Not a thing. We're leaving it just like that. All right? I'm not kidding. Let's go check real quick on our onions over here. This is our onion and potato Roquefort soup. Now that the onions get caramelized, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna add a little garlic, a couple of bay leaves. Be careful of him, ladies. Some cayenne pepper, some salt, about two, three large potatoes peeled, diced, right in there. You with me so far? Then, we're going to take our chicken stock or chicken broth right over it. Yeah, people have asked me on that WWW thing. Why, why do I heat up my stocks a lot of times first? You probably, you know, if you're wondering that. Sometimes when I like, I just made that soup but the stock was already hot. A couple of reasons. One, if you make a lot of homemade chicken stock and you keep it in the ice box or you keep it in the freezer, you always want to be sure the next day or two days after that when you're going to use that homemade stock to heat a little bit of it up because you want to make sure that it's not sour. Because if you didn't do that and you put it inside, you'd, God knows what you'd be wasting. In this case, pork fat. <laughs> and squash or whatever. So that's one reason why I do it. The other reason is that it's faster. Once I tasted it, I know it's not sour. It's faster. It's going to save me 15 minutes. Easy. So while we're going to bring that to a boil, oh, you know, croutons would be great in this. Fried potatoes would be good with this. You know, don't feel like you're in the mood? Hey, open a bag of zaps, you know? Put them in there. Here's what, how I like to finish it. Turn the heat off. Yeah, this is my kind of bowl. It's no sissy bowl. Serve a nice little, nice little portion. And then the fried spinach, excuse me, the fried sage that we pan sauteed. I just float a little bit of those in there. 
You could add a little bit of chive if you want, a little bit of parsley, make Hilda happy. Take a little bit of essence right around the old rim like that. Bam! There you have it. Make some friends with that. All right. Now, potato, onions, chicken stock, bite, bay leaf, salt, pepper, letting this boil up. Let me show you a great garnish with these. You know, you can either make or buy these things called crumpets. If you don't have them, no big deal. Use English muffins. <laughs> yeah. What's it like, some like crumpet police out there that's gonna <laughs> be looking in your window to see if you're using crumpets or English muffins? Come on. Here's what you do, no matter if it's crumpets or, see, if you had a potato and Roquefort soup, with toasted English muffins, that'd be like $1.99. You do potato and Roquefort soup with, you know, a gratinée of crumpets, that's like $6.99. <laughs> How you do it is this, we're gonna take walnuts, a little butter at room temperature, blue cheese, Oh, yeah, babe. And we're going to mix this in. See what we're doing here? Going to mix this in. Walnuts, blue cheese, and butter. <laughs> Where does he come up with these combos? Then, after you mix it up, here's the beautiful thing. You know, a little salt, a little pepper. You know what I'm feeling? I'm feeling like a little port wine should be in this. All right, our soup's coming to a boil. We wanna just sort of turn the heat down now. We're gonna simmer that. Mix the port wine in the walnuts, blue cheese, and a little butter. Then this is what we're gonna do. You take your crumpet and you smear it like this. Okay? You see where I'm going? <laughs> I know, there's always a bit to my, uh, my madness. Because what we're going to do is I'm going to finish spreading that blue cheese on the crumpets. And then when our soup is almost ready, right? Crumpets are going to go in the oven. Going to get all nice and like gooey. Oh, yeah. Wait till you see that. Wait till you see what's coming. Don't touch that dial. Doc Gibbs, everybody. probably at home. We've expanded a little bit of the family here. You know, everybody knows Doc and Cliff. But, Doc? We also have Ted Thomas Jr. on drums. <laughs> and Mr. Lewis Nicky Taylor on saxophone. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Good to have right, you all. All right. You feel the love in here. It's unbelievable. Welcome back. Hottie soups is what we're doing. And how was the... How's the first one? Delicious. You didn't get in there yet? <laughs> we will now. You actually sat there mm. without a taste? Mm. Oh. Okay. Delicious. This show is on a roll right now. <laughs> I've been fined. I've been ticketed. Now I can't get anyone to eat, Hilda. <laughs> All right. What we're going to do is uh, take our blue cheese crumpets. Oh, yeah. 
We're going to put those right in here in the broiler. What do you mean, broiler? Well, that's what it says, broil. I turned it on to broil. I got a hot heat up here. That's exactly what broiling is. You see, it's going to be very intense, very fast, right from the top down, like a salamander. All right. 45 minutes or so, that soup will simmer. How do you know? Well, when the potatoes stop busting up, you see like this here? Then the first thing you want to do, folks, is you want to get rid of those bay leaves. These things don't digest well, I can promise you. <laughs> they taste good, but, well, we're not going there. <laughs> now we're going to add some heavy cream and some light cream. Oh, yeah, I'm fair. Okay, now we're going to bring that up. Now, the next thing we want to do before we go crazy is we've got to taste this. You know, it's like one of those, well, does it need more salt? Does it need more pepper? Do I want to kick it up another notch? You know. So... We're just seeing in the vicinity. <laughs> kind of. And needs a little salt. It could definitely use some pepper. Oh, at least for me. <laughs> now, here's where it, we're going to finish this off right now. If anybody sees the broiler beginning to smoke behind me. Please just, you know, raise your hand or something, you know. Give me a wink, something. Yeah, this thing, it's hot when you got it on broil. This thing's like ready to leave here. But look at this. Oh, baby. Huh? Let me tell you something. You put one of those in your lunchbox and see what happens. All right, here we go. Here's what I'm going to do. Get the boat motor out again. Yeah, I want to break down some of these potatoes. I want texture, though. But the other reason why I'm doing this right now, how's the soup? Isn't it a great combination with that squash and the sausage? Love it. Love it. It's okay? All right. <laughs> Watch this one here. See, I'm also breaking down the potatoes, the starch in here to give it a little thickness. See that? Now watch how we're going to finish this one. <laughs> oh, boy. It's happy, happy. How I'm going to finish this is a little bit of fresh thyme. You don't have to have time if you don't want. Then I'm going to finish it with some crumbled, crispy bacon. Oh, wait. Wait. <laughs> then I'm going to put some blue cheese in here right now. Now we'll check for the seasoning. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Unbelievable. Now, I waited to put more salt because of the blue cheese. So it needs just a little pinch more. If you want it spicier, you know the drill. Here's how I like to finish it. Turn the heat off this. Ba, 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 ba. Nice potato Roquefort crispy bacon soup. Okay? All right? And then...
Oh, yeah, four minutes ago, you're throwing rocks at me. <laughs> then what I like is a couple of little walnuts, because I like that, you know, I'm a taste kind of guy, you know. Then you take one of our blue cheese crumpets, okay? Another component of what I really, really love, particularly in bean soups, are these guys right here. Smoked ham hocks. I mean, I give them out as Christmas presents, you know? <laughs> Put a little bow on there, they go a long way. And you never have to worry, if you get one of these, you don't have to worry about it. They fit really good in your coat pocket. <laughs> You take that thing to a neighbor's house. Hey, bought you a little present. Really? Thinking they're gonna get some chocolates or something, right? You lay one of these big ham hocks on them like this. Hey, you're gonna be tight with them. I'm telling you. But. Cliff's about ready to fall off the piano over there. But you gotta score them for two reasons. They take a long time to get tender, to get happy, but they eventually get happy. Here's a trick I'm going to show you to do from now on. Score it like I just did, put it in the pot, cover it with water, put the lid on it, turn the heat on, we're going to bring it up to a boil. How's that soup? Excellent. Oh, it really is. Not bad for a Portuguese guy, huh? <laughs> So, seriously, put the lid on it. We're going to bring it to a boil. And then we're going to turn the heat down and let it simmer. Let it stop first, a good hour in advance. That's how much time it needs. Because you want it to be tender. Because when that meat falls off that ham hock bone, oh, oh. Talk about happy. So, what we're going to do is a, a very quick pea soup with ham. Not no ordinary ham. I'm using this stuff here. It's country ham or Smithfield ham. When you're using this, though, for your soups or your beans, red beans, black beans, whatever you're using, just remember one thing. This is salty. This ham is salty, the way that it's air-dried, air-cured. So be a little easy on the salt in the beginning of what you're making. I soaked, for some crazy reason, I soaked my split peas overnight. Why? I don't know. I don't know what came over me. <laughs> you know, I'm all confused these days right now. But look, you don't have to. I have taken them right out of the bag, washed them in the pot, and had soup 45 minutes later. So, but it, they're clean. They're at least happy. <laughs> so this is what we're going to do. We're going to take a little butter. And then I've got my ham. Yeah, that piece right there that you noticed. When I went to the butcher, I said, could I have that one with the bone in it? You see, it's got the bone. <laughs> this is a lot of ham for this soup, but hey, it's a pork fat thing. We'll be happy. All right, we're going to render this out for two, three minutes, folks. Our ham hock's on. Carrots, celery, onions, a little garlic's going in there in about three minutes. Then the peas. And then we're going to start with almost a gallon of water. When we come back, I'll show you what it looks like. Stick around. We'll be right back. Doc Gibbs. All right, welcome back.
Guys having a good time so far? A little hottie soup? All right, so, hour, hour and a half with the old ham hock. Then you put it inside the pea soup. I was telling each folks over here during the commercial break, 45 minutes, man, you got pea soup. And you know what? You don't even probably need the boat blender. This stuff will stop breaking up by itself. But let me tell you this. You got to taste it. I told you in the top. This is like very close to being ready. The ham hock is in here. You got to taste it. I guarantee you this is too salty because we had a lot of Smithfield ham in here, country ham. <laughs> it's a little salty. Don't freak out. You don't have to like call 911. <laughs> it's like, okay, you could add milk, you could add cream, you could just add a little water. That will dilute. If you ever have a soup and it's too, too salty, add a little potato, peeled potato in there. It'll absorb some of the salt. All right, look, I'm going to take some Maripois, except I'm using leeks, carrots, and onions, no celery. Then I'm going to show you a little garnish while that's cooking. A little salt. Some pepper. While that's cooking, let me just tell you what we're doing this Windsor soup. This is sirloin. I'm going to season this with essence. Oh, yeah, sirloin. Get it? <laughs> he got it. Hey, you know. Now, when this cooks for about a minute, I'm going to add these pieces of sirloin in here. Then I'm going to cover it with this beef stock. But I want to go back to the pea soup while I'm working this because I'm trying to get another one in. So I want to do a garnish for the pea soup. Watch this. I've got white potato, red potato. What I'm going to do is drop them in some hot oil. And I'm going to make some, oh yeah, I'm going to make some truffle potato chips. Okay? When we come back, I'll show you exactly what truffle potato chips and pea soup what ham and ham hock looks like. Stick around, we'll be right back. in the Emerald Live Band. <laughs> Folks, if you just joined us, we've been having a great time with some hearty soups, very creative. Now, the carrot, leek, onion with the butter, salt, pepper. Then I added the sirloin, okay? When the sirloin gets brown, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of flour, kind of like a roux, which is gonna be a little thick for it, and a bokeh ghani. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add that beef stock. Bring it up to a boil and simmer that about 30, 45 minutes until the sirloin gets t uh, tender. Then I'll show you what we're going to do. Meanwhile, our delicious pea soup. Again, just before you serve it to the family, a little taste. Make sure some of that salt went away. Now it's great. Watch this. Oh, there's that bone. <laughs> you want to make sure you get rid of those bay leaves. I'll tell you what, folks. Those red and white potatoes thin, I fried in oil till they were crispy. Took them out of the hot oil. Salt and pepper them. Drizzled some truffle oil on them and Parmesan cheese. And that's what I'm going to use right there for our garnish, those truffle potato chips. You know what I'm saying? Huh? There you have that right there. Bam, bam. All right. Once the sirloin gets... We'll check the seasoning on that. Once the sirloin gets t uh, tender, I serve this Windsor soup like this. And what I made to serve that with is some rosemary popcorn. Oh, yeah, babe. We ain't playing around here on Emerald Live. Look at this, we just put a little bit of that rosemary popcorn 
right on there. A little bam! Bam! Oh, yeah. A little oil, put the seeds in. A few sprigs of rosemary. Oh. Hottie soups. There you go. That's the Windsor and the pea soup there. Did we have some fun doing these soups tonight or what, huh? Unbelievable. I want to thank you all. I want to thank you for joining me at home. I'm Emma Lagasse. Have a super evening. See you tomorrow. <laughs>